Hello everyone, welcome back to Azure SQL Mastery and today I will show you how to install Azure Data Studio in your machine. Before that, let's first understand what is Azure Data Studio. Azure Data Studio is a cross-platform database tool for any data professional like a developer, DBA, Power BI developer, data engineer or any developer who works directly or indirectly on a SQL Server. Azure Data Studio has many features like a code snippet, rich intelligence, rich query editors, as well as uh, you can create your own server level as well as the database level dashboard. So let's first download the Azure Data Studio and install step by step. Okay, so first open the Chrome browser and type Azure Data Studio download. And go to the Microsoft website and download the user installer yes so download completed so right click on the file show in a folder right click and click on a run as an administrator accept the license agreement click on next click on next click on next create a desktop icon if you want to register the azure data studio editor for support of file you can register it or skip it click on next and click on install button and click on finish so congratulations now you have successfully installed the azure data studio now first let's connect your sql server inside the azure data studio so for that go to the connection window go to the server and click on a new connection and type your server name so my server name is SQL Brain Box. And click on a connect button. So once you click a connect button, by default it will open a server level dashboard. So you can customize this dashboard as well. Okay. So let's first connect and click on a new query. So this is a query window like a SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio. And here you can select your database. So I'm going to select the database adventure work and type the query, select star from cells dot cells territory and click on a run button. Okay, so now you can run a Eric any query using this query editor. So this is a query editor window where you can write the query. This is a server group. The purpose of the server group, basically you can divide your different different environment using this group. So for example, right now this SQL brain box is my development server. Okay. And I have many servers, right? As a developer or a DBA, you can connect every day you connect many instances. Okay. So to easily identify either it's a development server or a production server you can use this server group option so let me create my group so first i am going to create a development group and i can give a color so development group, uh, group it means i'm okay with the green color because you can run any query now I'm going to move this server to the development group. So just drag and drop my this SQL Brainbox instance as a tag as a inside the development group. Similarly, you can create any number of groups like say production group and give the color. And you can you can map the production server here. So you can create a n number of groups using this uh, using the server group. Now let's go to the query window again and then this query so the base part of azure data studio is you can get a quick insight of your data using this menu let's say or uh, you want to save this result as a csv then click on this button your data will be stored as a csv if you want to uh, save this data as a excel you click on a, as a excel if you want to save a data as a JSON, so click on this menu, it will automatically create the JSON file. Similarly to the 
XML and the best part is that you can based you 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 can understand your data based on your chart so you can quickly get all the insight of the data using this menus okay now let's understand some of intelligence so if you see the intelligence are so good compared to ssms now there are inbuilt code snippets are there which are also very useful in this azure data studio so for example you want to create a table right so you have, you have to just type uh, sql create table create database so sql create database sql create index sql create store procedures and here is a table so sql create table once you tab it the entire syntax will be available for you and now you have to just give the name so let's say my table name is um, product and the schema is dbo so using this code snippet you can avoid the syntax error and it will definitely help to speed up your development work similarly you can create a store procedure so for example create a table now let's say create a store procedure okay so using this template you can definitely speed up your development work and avoid the syntax error okay so i hope you like this video in the next video we will see how to backup and restore using the azure data studio so thank you very much. See you in the next video. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Azure SQL Mastery. And today I will show you how to do database backup and restore in Azure Data Studio. So open the Azure Data Studio and create a connection or connect your local instance. So once you connect the local instance, go to the database and here I am going to take the database backup of adventure work so right click on adventure work database and click on a backup you can change the path so here I am going to take the database backup on a database backup folder give the name also here you can set the compression so here I am going to do a compress backup also you can set the encryption if you want or you can also change the media setting so here i am going to go with the overwrite all existing backup set and you also check the uh, reliability so i go with the verify the backup when finish also you can set the retention or retention of your database backup so i'm not going to set here okay and click on a backup so here you can see all activities detail okay just now created the database backup now let's restore the database backups so go to the instance right click on a manage once you click on manage the database dashboard will be available and here there is a restore button so you click on a restore button and here I am going to restore from the file so select their backup file give the path name give the database name so here i am going to give the database name new today and click on restore button so here you can see the restore database activity is in progress now restore database activity is succeed let's refresh it so now the adventure work database 2017 two days available so i hope you like this video see you in the next video Hello everyone, welcome back to Azure SQL Mastery and in this video, I will show you how to create a dashboard inside the Azure Data Studio. By default, Azure Data Studio provide a two types of dashboard, a database level dashboard and a server level dashboard to monitor the servers as well as database. So to check the server level dashboard, you have to connect your instance 
and uh, right click and click on manage it will open the server level dashboard where you will get a database size level information as well as the backup status okay and if you want to check the database level uh, dashboard you have to select any of the database right click and click on manage so where you will uh, get a database level dashboard now the server level dashboard is give uh, information about the servers and the best part of this dashboard is that you can customize this dashboard based on your requirement so for example let's say every time when you connect the instance and if you want to check the insight of your server based on your requirement for example you want a number of connection inside this server cpu utilization by each database or a number of logins inside this server or a database size uh, inside this server total number of database inside this server so you can configure each and every information in your dashboard so every time when you connect the your instance you will get a quick insight of your server without doing a any query and similarly for the database level dashboard you will configure a database level information for example top 10 consuming cpu consuming query or top 10 memory consuming query or a uh, number of blockings inside the query or missing index detail or unused index details or types of index fragmentation level right so you can configure the similar information in a database level dashboard so whenever you connect the database and check the dashboard you will get a database level information very quickly without typing or any query okay so let's first customize the server level dashboard so for that you have to type uh, control shift p and open the user setting okay so before that uh, to save a time i have created two queries let me quickly show you so open the file uh, server level so i have here i have created two queries number of logins in my server so when i run this query i will get a total number of logins inside my server and the second query is number of uh, CPU utilizations by database. So when I run this query, I will get a information about the uh, data, uh, how much CPU utilized by each database. Okay. So now let's customize our server level dashboard. So go to the, so click a control shift P and open the user setting and in this search text box type a dashboard okay so now when you type a dashboard you will get a da uh, dashboard database property dashboard database tab so first three tabs are database level and second three are a server level so here we are customized a server level dashboard so go to the dashboard server widgets click a edit setting json file now you are in the json file so let's customize it so so let's go with the first name so i want to give a name um, number of logins okay then grid item config and set the x and y so i'm going to set here one uh, let's go two by two and uh, size y two okay after that let's configure the widget and inside the widget i am going to select the inside widget and here i will give my file name okay so let's first format this json file so right click and click on a format documents okay so before give a query file name let's first select the type of the information you want to show so here i want to show the information in a table format like this I, this is not table format this is a graph format but i want to show the information like a table format so select a type and type a table okay and i will give my query file location so Okay. 
सेव द फाइल अगेन क्लिक ऑन इंस्टेंस नेम राइट क्लिक एंड क्लिक ऑन मैनेज so you will get a number of logins informations so here now you customize your server level dashboard so the default setting will not be available so now you want a default setting as well as so let's go to the json file again and copy this copy this code and type uh, let's say backup history right so backup history and here i'm going to remove this code and what i want i want a backup so backup history server inside let's format it okay save the file i think some missing yeah, this is extra i guess let's remove it format okay so now let's open it uh, again a dashboard let's close the dashboard and right click and click on manage so now you will get a backup history okay similarly you will get a size of the database so let's go it select the code copy the code sorry paste it and here i want a database level size so Uh, all the database size server inside so let's select it close the dashboard right click click on manage so here you will get a okay let's change the name first so here the database database size and this is a backup history this is a number of logins right click on manage you will see the database size your history now so similarly you can customize a dashboard based on your requirement so right now the number of logins backup backup history database size now there is one more uh, let's do it the cpu utilization by each database so i am again copy the code and here i will give the cpu utilize by database and give the database a file name so my open the file give the name okay save this json file refresh the dashboard okay let's close it and connect again so you will get a cpu utilized by database so here you will get a uh, the database name cpu time and the cpu percentage okay so now let's say if you want uh, any query let's say for example number of logins now i want a query inside this table or so click on three dots click on a run a query you will get a query used by this dashboard okay this is a server level dashboard let's configure the database level dashboard so for that go to the any database and click on manage so this is a database level dashboard so by default you are getting a facility you can object uh, you can search your object using this search window so for example department so you can search it okay but now i want more details in in this dashboard let's say for example top 10 queries cpu consuming query or top 10 memory consuming query or missing index detail or unused index detail or uh, top, total tables count or uh, a number of object details let's say for example number of tables or let's say active connection detail you will configure a database level dashboard okay so for that again Uh, type a control shift p open the user setting and go to this time you have to select the database widgets edit a json file okay so by default there is a object search dashboard is there okay now you want to configure 
your own customer's dashboard for example top 10 memory utilize query or top 10 cpu can expensive query okay so for that let's do it so let's say expensive query queries by cpu okay i'm not going to change this code but here i'm going to select the insight widget and here i am going to go with the type so <coughs> here i'm selecting the type a table again i'm going to type a query file and my query file is available in this location so let's select the location so <coughs> So I have already created a query to save the time. So let's give the path. And give the file name. Dot SQL. Okay. Save the JSON file. Right click any database click on a manage so here you will see now i will get a expensive query by cpu okay or you can say cpu utilize query so you will get this information whenever you select the database and click on a manage so using this dashboard you will quickly get a inside of your database you do not need to write or any query you will easily get a information whenever you want and you will get you will get this information quickly so no need to remember the queries you will whatever you want you can customize in your dashboard to save the time okay so let's now uh, create one more tab for the cpu utilized query okay this is sorry memory uh, utilized query Save the JSON file, right click a database, click on a manage. So now here right now I don't have a query which is taking a more memory. So right now there is no result to show. Okay. So similarly you can customize your dashboard based on your requirement. My intention to show this demo. So you will customize your dashboard and you will quickly get a uh, insight of your database as well as a server based on your requirement i hope you like this video see you in the next video thank you hello everyone welcome back to azure sql mastery and in this video i will show you how you can create a code snippet to generate a quick sql code without any syntax error as well as how you can create your own custom code snippet so let's get started open the azure data studio so here we are going to perform a five steps using the code snippet. First, we are going to create the database. Second, we are going to uh, create the table. Third, we are going to add, add a column in an existing table. Fourth, we are going to insert a data. And fifth, we are going to create our own custom code snippet. Okay, so let's take an example. You are a new in a SQL server and you want to create a database using the SQL code. So for that, you can use a code snippet. Now, in Azure Data Studio, all the code snippet start with the SQL. So first step, I want to create a database. Type SQL and create database. So now the ready-made code is available for you. You have to just replace a database name with the actual name. So I want to create 
the database code sniff it so type code sniff it okay and select the code and click a run button okay so the command completed successfully let's refresh the database folder now so the database is now available now i want to create a table inside this database so right click new query and for creating a new table the ready-made code snippet is sql create table okay so this is a time table okay sql create table okay so again you have to just replace a table name with actual table name so, so here i want to create a table name employee so type employee and now give the actual column name so first column is name and the second column is address select the code and click on a run button so commands completed successfully let's refresh the table folder so employee table got created now i want to add a column in an existing table means in employee table so for that the code snippet is already available so type sql add column now replace this new column name with actual column name so i want to add a mobile and a table name so table name is employee select the code and run let's quickly check select star from employee so now the mobile column is exist now let's say i want to insert a data inside this employee table so for that type sql insert table okay now just replace the table name with actual name so my employee and uh, column name so you have to give uh, actual column name so id comma name comma address comma mobile and actual data so one comma comma india comma mobile number and here i want to insert only one row so i'm going to remove this select the code and run so the one row affected let's quickly check okay so now we have successfully insert the data in employee table so we have completed four steps using the sql code snippet and till now all the code snippets are available in the azure data studio now you have to create your own code snippet so in the sql server 2016 we have a facility that we can drop uh, any object using this if exist statement it means that if the table is exist then it will drop otherwise it will not throw any error because let's say i just give you a small example in my code snippet database salary table is not exist now i want to drop table salary so when i run this command it will give the error cannot drop the salary because the it, it it does not exist or you do not have a permission but if i use a new syntax it will not throw the error okay now i want to create my own code snippet using this syntax so for that you have to type control shift p and type user snippet so open the user configure the user snippet click and type sql okay now here you want to write the code so let's do it so here again i am going to start with the sql so sql drop if exist okay. 
let me copy the code and here there are three parameter prefix description and body so let me first set the prefix so sql drop if exist then i want to set the body inside the body i want to set my code so what is my code my code is this okay so let me add it first okay so first drop table okay so here i want to drop any object any object type it's might it might be a table or view or function or a database so here my first parameter is object type so dollar 1 so dollar one means my first parameter and type object type and the if exist here the you have to give the actual object name so this this one is my second parameter so let's do it so so dollar 2 an object name okay now here you want to replace the actual name with a parameter the first parameter is dollar 1 and second parameter is dollar 2 give the okay sorry this is a body and this is a description okay so inside the description just give the name uh, you can drop any database object with new sql 2016 syntax save the file and format it close the file and now let's quickly check so control n and here first uh, select the database so database is code snippet and and type the code snippet sql drop if exist great now here you have to just replace the name so my object type so here i want to drop the table employee so my object type is table and my object name is employee select the code and run so command completed successfully let's refresh the folder so now no more table is exist similarly let's say i want to drop my database or i want to drop a view so you can just replace the object type with actual object type and object name with actual table or view name okay similarly let's say if you want to drop a database so in object type is my database and object name is actual database name so my database name is code snippet okay now you have to add one more syntax while drop the database use master okay let me close all the query first run command completed successfully let's refresh the database folder now the code snippet database is no more exist in my server so i hope you like this video see you in the next video Hello everyone welcome back to Azure SQL Mastery and in this video i will show you how you can customize your workspace based on your requirement for example you want to change the color of this workspace or you want to change the font size or you want to change the keyboard shortcut or you want to work in a zen mode 
then you can customize entire workspace based on your preferences. So let's get started. First, I want to change the color of this my workspace. For that, you have to type Control Shift P and type color theme. So you can change the color. So let's say right now I am in the light Azure Data Studio. You can go with the any theme based on your likes. Okay. So I always work in a light Azure Data Studio. I have seen most of the developer prefers a dark Azure Data Studio. Now I want to change the font size. How you can do it? So for that again, type the Control Shift P and type open user settings. Here, there are a lot of options are there. Okay, but I especially I am looking for a font. So let's type font. Let me split the window. Okay, great. Now, let me change the font. So let's right now the font size is 35. I want to go with 50 and see here. Okay, no, let's say I want to go with the 25. So based on your preference, again, you can change the font size. Similarly, you can change the cursor style. So right now, by default, it's a line. Okay. But if you want to change your cursor style, then you go here and change based on your preference. So block or maybe block outline. So I always uh, go with the default setting, but it's again, it's up to you. Okay, now I want to change the keyboard setting. For that, you have to type Control Shift P and type keyboard settings. So open keyboard shortcuts. Okay, now here for the cancel query, right now the shortcut is Shift A. Now I want to change with the Shift C. Then you can just double click on the line and type whatever the shortcut you want. So I want a shift C and click on enter. So now any running query, I want to cancel it with a keyboard shortcut. I have to type shift C. So let's do it. So here there is one query and I want to run this query thousand times. So I am starting it and now I want to cancel. I am going to type shift C. So now it's cancel. Okay. So now this keyboard shortcuts again, you can change based on your preference. So I hope you like this video. See you in the next video. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Azure SQL Mastery. And in this video, I will show you how to use extension to add more functionality in Azure Data Studio. So let's take an example. You are a SQL Server DBA and you want to create a jobs in Azure Data Studio or you want to troubleshoot a SQL problem using the SQL profiler or you want to generate a script for your database object or you want to create a backpack and backpack file for your database or you want to import a text file or a CSV file to database. Now there is no direct facility is available in Azure Data Studio. So if you go here and right click, sorry, uh, right click. So only we have few options compared to SSMS. Okay. So if you compare, uh, if you check the in a SSMS, we have a multiple folders, database, security, server object, replications, management, integration service, catalog, SQL server agent. Right. But in Azure Data Studio, we have only three options, database, security and server object. OK, so uh, in SSMS, using the SQL Server agent, you can schedule a job. OK, uh, using uh, the database option, you can generate a script for your database or you can create a backpack file or backpack file or you can import and export files. But in Azure Data Studio, only you have a limited features. Okay. Now, as a DBA, you want to achieve the same functionality in Azure Data Studio because the SSMS is available only for the Windows, but the Azure Data Studio is available for Mac user, Windows user, as well as the Linux user because it's a cross-platform tool. So now you can achieve through 
marketplace and you can search a extension based on your requirement so for example the first recommended tool so there are total 56 extension is there but it will keep growing every day okay so let's take an example the admin pack for sql server so using this extension you can achieve a full requirement for server agent where you, you can schedule a job sql server backpack file where you can create a backpack backpack file or SQL Server Import where you can import a CSV and text file. SQL Server Profiler where you can troubleshoot as your SQL problem. So let's install uh, this extension. So to install an extension, just click on an install button. So now this extension is installed successfully. Let's quickly check. So go to the connection, right click and click a manage so when you click a manage it will open a server level dashboard and here you can see in the administration section there is a sql agent where you can schedule a job through azure data studio similarly let's check the other functionality select the database folder click on any of this database and right click you see now we have a two more features are added import wizard and a data tire applications so data tire application is on uh, used for the backpack and backpack file and import wizard is useful when you want to import your csv and uh, text file now okay here also you see uh, there is uh, one more feature is added called a launch profiler where you can troubleshoot uh, your sql server problem so the launch profile is uh, in ssms we have a sql server profiler it's it's the same okay now let's install one more extension called a database administration tool extension for windows user this uh, extension is basically used to generate a script okay like uh, to generate a script of your database object okay so now the extension is installed let's quickly check right click select a database and right uh, right click and generate a script so here now uh, using this feature you can select your database object and you can generate a script this is a similar to the ssms generate script feature okay now there are many more extensions there are total 56 extensions are there based on your requirement you can install it for example manage instance dashboard where you can manage your azure database PowerShell command. So if you want to run your PowerShell command through Azure Data Studio, you can add this extension. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. I hope you will add more and more features in Azure Data Studio using this marketplace. See you in the next video. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Azure SQL Mastery. And in this video, I will show you how you can use Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter SQL Notebook is an open source web based application that allow you to create and share the document containing the code, equation, visualization and narrative text. Also you can create a single file which contain a code as well as the result set and that file you can share to your team member for the reference. So let's get started. Open the Azure Data Studio and click on a create notebook and in the inside this notebook i am going to perform some dml operation here there are two sections first is a text cell and second is a code cell so inside in in the text cell i am going to add the text so how to run select query add a paragraph and here I'm going to add a code. Let me complete the connection. Select star from sales dot sales territory. And I, I'm going to run this select statement because I want this result set inside my document. Let me add one more text. How to delete the data from table let me add the core text here again
code cell and uh, delete from table where territory id equal to 1 again i want result set inside this document now let me add one more text how to create a copy of that table copy of existing table let me order let me add a code cell select style from cells dot cell cells dot cells territory and uh, into let me create a similar copy and uh, i want result inside this document run it so result is available so similarly you can create an entire document useful document or uh, or you can create a document based on your requirement for example you have a specific business logic so you can create an entire document for your business logic and you can share to your team member for future reference so now i'm going to save this file once you save the file you can open the existing notebook from here so notebooks inside the notebooks open the folder and here inside this folder i have a three notebooks so just now we have created this notebook so anytime you can open the notebook and you can run it great okay so i hope you now understand the concept of notebook and uh, this notebook is very useful uh, where you can define your entire business logic you can explain entire your database structure also it's a very useful when you have to share some knowledge to your team member so i hope you like this video see you in the next video thank you